Good morning, Mount of the Lord Church. Good morning. Wow, this is awesome. Uh, today is a wonderful day. It's a little bit cold outside, but inside it's warmer, and I believe everybody's here comfortable uh, and in a position to hear the Word of God. So today we're going to be talking about something that has come from 2 Samuel chapter 7. But the whole point is, God keep his promises. You know, in 2 Samuel 7, there are something that happened to David. And it was so clear that to you and I, there are moments when we give our life, our attention for something that's so dear to us, or maybe the moment, the season of our life, when we go through it up to a certain point, we like to slow down and evaluate it. What, what just happened to us in order to see what's going to be the next step. So over here, David got a show of something here that the King David finally gets settled down in his new palace. He had time to think. He had been busy. We all know, if you know the story of David, he's a fighter. He go to war. Nobody defeat him. He always fight. And he organized things like the Jerusalem, the capital of Jerusalem. And he chased down all the enemy of Israel. So he defeated Israel's enemy, left and right. Now he comes to the point of pause. And at the moment, I don't know about you, there are moments, maybe in the school, you have worked a little bit hard. Maybe you have A plus or B plus or something. And you start thinking about how to do the next classes you're going to be taking. But David's case here is something we say, we, you and I will say, according to the New Testament, God give us a call. And the call is a mandate call. And we call it, go and preach the gospel. This is something that every Christian needs to do. But David, look at his life. The way he has been prosper, you know, he go to war, he never been defeated. The things has worked for him. He think, who am I <clears throat> to enjoy all this? Who am I to experience all these things? This is the moment I have to look at my life because he here, as a king, living in a beautiful building, nice place. And he's thinking about God, a divine God who has saved him, doesn't have a house to worship on it. So David has a plan to do something. He thinks like uh, I could build a permanent <coughs> excuse me, a permanent house, a temple for God to live in. This is a, in a human nature. This is what we do, you know. You want to do something to be congratulated for what God is doing, but we have to understand that he's God, and we are not. But the way we respond to the blessing of God is in the human side. But we can see the human side of David trying to pay God back, trying to build, to say that I'm going to build something for him. So David desired to build a temple for the Lord. And the God... It says something. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him. Just look, think about that. And here I'm living in the palace of cedar, while the ark of God remained in a tent. Wow, this is beautiful. 
You know, is it sometimes is a challenge for all of us? Is it is a way to think about life a little bit? Don't you just keep going, not knowing where the next step is gonna be. But when you are positioned in the things of God, that push you to start thinking deeply. You know, we can be thinking in a way or the way of the culture. But it's all that thinking position that we can have to lead on the things of God. So David thinking as a human being that uh, he having entered into a period of rest because God has. He thinks he can provide a permanent house for God. At that time, we have to understand a lot of things have happened because what the culture used to be. You know, at the time that David had a conversation of Nathan, they, they, have, they, they have a culture who can shape, they always like to, to do something to glorify the earthly God. And the, the whole government, they give everything about themselves so they can build something up. So that, the conversation of uh, David with Nathan is about to do something in that level. But the good things that I love about David is <clears throat> he doesn't just think about himself and go just want to do it. He think and he involves somebody in his thinking process to challenge him. This is the good things. For me personally, it's a good lesson. But God might be giving you things to do. But you know, God loves the community of the saints. We are together, we share the good things together. We share the testimony. We share what God is doing in our life. And David is trying to share his heart, what he thinks he can do for the Lord. And Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, in verse 3, Go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. Wow. So this is Nathan tell David that this is what you have to do. But he's a prophet, but he knew. He just, he respected David so much to the point where he haven't been asking God if what he's advising is a good one. But God spoke to him. Thank God he listened to the voice of God. In verse 4, Nathan tells David that God has a different plan. That David has the opportunity, God's blessing, to become a foundational Bible character and with a special ministry, one who will be remembered for setting the stage for universal salvation. So there are good news for David. There are something that is beyond David's imagination. David has a, a privilege to be chosen by God because through him we will see how the whole project of Jesus Christ, the whole project of God will come down to the nativity of Jesus Christ. So we see how the response of David and, uh, and uh, the position of David and what God is want to do through David. It seems inappropriate to David to be living in greater luxurious than his divine master. I know that well, why I should be so blessed and I won't be able to do something to glorify my God. That was the idea of David. Well, like I said, at that time, the kingship in the ancient Near East throughout history had devoted the national resources to the enhancement of temple in order to honor their God and secure divine blessing for themselves and their, and, and their kingdom. <clears throat> you see, the culture always shaped people's mindset. The culture is going to shape you. That's why we have to go to the source constantly. David just don't know better. 
He just react out of the human nature of what he think he can do. So, Nathan saw no problem in David introducing this practice into the Israelite royal tradition. Accordingly, he encouraged the king to go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with him. Says Nathan, let us receive a word from God contrary to what he told David. Thank God he is so humble enough to change his mind because God told him something that he need to know to declare that to David about what he's planning. Hallelujah. The Lord make eternal promises to the house of David. And we looked at from the whole verses, from verse 4 to 17, which is a lot of verses that I won't be able to read all of you. I will read that to you. I would like you to read it for yourself, but let me read it just from verse 8. Now then, tell my servant David, that's God speaking to Nathan, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pastor and from following the flock to be ruler over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and we plant them so that they can have a house for their own and no longer be disturbed. The Israelites have gone through solar. And verse 17 says, Nathan reported to David all the word of his entire revelation. He tell everything that David need to know. That David, he is the one with a special ministry. He is a God blessing, one who will be remembered for setting the stage for universal salvation. That's why we say God keep his promise. From the Old Testament, God always promised his people that I'm God and I'm going to establish you. I'm going to save you and I'm going to put you in the place of honor. God is doing that. Even though there are moments things doesn't seem like God is doing anything. The Lord demonstrates in his word that he is the promise-keeping God. You go to Genesis 49, 10, talk about the scepter will not depart from Judah, not the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and obedience to the nation shall be his. In other words, the scepter is a symbol of authority. authority. That authority is to be expressed through the life of David. And God is making those things happening in the front of all Israelites. That David will become the standard by which his descendant will be judged. The house of David became the nucleus around which messages of hope proclaimed by Hebrew prophets and later generations were built. God had a plan from Israelites. And that plan, even though between the Old Testament and the New Testament, they have almost 400 years difference, but his word and never stopped to exist to influence the whole world. God promised. The confidence and God promised to the people who was victimized by, by humiliated by invaders, and the people victim of a divine punishment because of no respect, God tried to restore those people back. The Lord promised to David of a kingdom that will endure forever. That was the seed of hope 
that he resurrected a nation. Thank God for everything. The Lord promise of an enduring house for David became Israel assurance that God will once again lift the nation up and cause it to flourish anew. I mean, when I look at this and I look life for everyone, you might be in a position right now. You might be telling yourself, I couldn't make it. That's true. And, and in, your, in your physical side, the situation that you can see over your mind, your limitation, nothing seems impossible. It's, a, it's impossible. But my God, the God that we serve, if you trust him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, you will be surprised how big he is. Even before you, you start thinking about your problem, God knows that you are in a situation difficult. Even before you start thinking about it, he knew that you were there already. So what I believe what God wants you to do is just to bring that to him as a father and engage him discussing things that he wants to hear from your own mouth. Because the confession from your mouth, the meditation from your heart, your attitude of communication is needed at a certain point in your life. We all need that. We call that prayer. We call that communication. We call that the way to be closer. You want to be close to the Lord, you have to take a certain step in your life to be closer, to read, to discuss, to meditate, to stand firm for the word that he has for all of us. The Lord promised for all of us. Those words played an essential preparation role in developing the messianic expectation that were fulfilled in Jesus. All those that we are reading from the Old Testament, those expectations God is talking about, the all, the all has been fulfilled in Jesus. So the divine declaration that Nathan, from I talk about from verse 4, 2 Samuel 7, verse 4 to 17, you can read all this. So it's the divine declaration proclaimed here through the prophet Nathan, our foundation for seven major New Testament teachings about Jesus. One of them is the son of David. Jesus is the son of David. There are so much we can talk about. He's the one who will rise from the dead. We know all that. The builder of the house for God. That's the Jesus right there. The possessor of the throne. He is the one. The possessor for eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. The son of God. The product of an immaculate conception since he has God as his father. God is so awesome. Devour the word of God. Study the word of God. You see Jesus Christ everywhere. You see God is, is walking through the whole testament until the New Testament. There are moments God questioned the desire of David. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? You know? Yeah, this is a, he loved him so much. When God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, at, the, at that moment they don't have any house or anything. Because what this we learn is uh, they have uh, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. God has always used that to direct their step during the night and during the day. God's presence was so real that they don't need those beautiful buildings before God show up. But God is always moving in the wilderness when they were there. And before the Israelites left Mount Sinai, that's the way God commanded to, to, to start build a tent to serve as a divine dwelling where they can put the ark. But God, what is matter 
is God moving always in the life of the leaders. God always moving always in the life of people. If you want to see God, sometimes you got to see your heart. You got to understand the position of God for you the way he established his kingdom through the person of David. How he put David as a, 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 a nucleus and everything surrounding him to the point where today we are talking about the nativity of Jesus Christ. God is always in the ministry of making things clear to each one of us. So, when they left the Sinai, the Lord has never expressed displeasure not having a tent. But that's not the point. Even in the absence of an impressive building that the people could see, the Lord's presence among them was discernible. You can see it. People, you can, you can experience God in your own life. Sometimes you want to experience the God, just set yourself apart for a while. Pray a while. Thinking about God, use his scripture, meditate on it. Let the scripture speak to you, to your whole heart and soul and mind. What we, we are experiencing right here, as David rise to the rank of the greatest man of the earth, we mean that the Lord will provide Israel a secure and a peaceful homeland. And God, he said in verse 10, 2 Samuel 7, I will provide a place for my people Israel. In addition, the justice will prevail for the Lord people. They are not justice before, but because you are dwelling place of God, the justice will prevail. Hmm. And the wicked man will not oppress you anymore. So they all plan a future, a further benefit for David beyond those already mentioned. Lord will always give David rest from all his enemies. An apparent reference to the continued and increased freedom from the threat of non-Israelite aggressor. I love when God said to pray for Israel. All the time we need to be praying for them because they are. That's where Jesus come from. And in the land and, and around the world today, people still against Israel. They are in the Middle East. People, the enemy of Israel, they're still waging the war today to destroy them. But the we all know, according to the word of God, that they couldn't. Because it's not a human being plan. It's God's plan. Therefore, we are called to keep Israel in prayer constantly. Like David, all believers are implicitly encouraged to be humble and burdened by the perception of God's incredible goodness expressed within their life. In other words, you and I, we have to be bold. We have to be happy where we are. We have to be able to understand that uh, don't be, just be afraid. I don't think that you can do things that God put in your heart. God is working today. Yes, the culture will tell you something else. The situation every time will let you down that uh, why to ask yourself a question, why those things, why those things? But I'm, I'm here to let you know for what the Bible is telling me, the Bible saying God is still working today. God is still moving today. And God can use you if you open your heart to him. No matter where you are, God is able to use you. One of the applications we want to use here is verse 13. There are three of Jesus' claim from 2 Samuel 7, 13. Jesus claimed he will build a temple. Hallelujah. 
He said that he is the one who will build a house for my name. And the second, he claimed to possess an eternal throne. And finally, he claimed to possess an imperishable kingdom. My kingdom is not from this world. Wow, I like to be part of things like that. My kingdom is not from this world. That's why sometimes when you become a Christian, and uh, your language sometimes is difficult for people to understand. They have to have another translation to the nature to understand what you're saying. Because I know if you said as long as with the, the connection of the Lord and the God starts speaking to you, people won't understand your language. By fulfilling his promise to establish the house of your servant David, the Lord's name will be great forever because God's trustworthiness and goodness will be manifest, evident to all. You know, as people, especially the covenant people of Israel, you and me, witness God's incredible display of mercy and favor to the family of David. They will say the Lord Almighty is God over Israel. God will establish David's home, house, kingdom, and throne forever. I know that word, you are in great position to see exactly what God is doing through David. Together we are called to be the body of Christ. As you have heard dozens of times, we are to be tangible, living, breathing expression of God's presence here and now. I, I said earlier, that we have uh, something to do. I want you to, to, to dream big. I, I, don't, I don't know how kind of call God have in your life, but since you are coming to this church, I would like you to start dreaming big. Because the, the, when you're not dreaming big, you don't have a challenge, then you can trust God. But if there everything in your finger step, you can fix it, then you're not trusting God. You have to be in a position where the things get so huge and you say, wow, I don't know, I cannot go through this without my money, God. That's where I want to see you. Are you have a big dream? Are you have something you just know it that God only can come through it? That's where we want to see everybody in the month of the Lord. Dream big. What we celebrate at Christmas is not just the birth of a mysterious and miraculous child 2,000 years ago, but the birth, too, of God's essence in us, in our generation, in our time and place. Right now, your heart, the temple of the Holy Spirit, this is where we are today. This is how we are communicating the message that can speak to you so clearly and directly because you have that. May we also, by God's prophetic voice, discern our calling and may our ministry be both efficacious and joyful. When we stand in the call of God, when we stand for what God requires of us, if we understand our position in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be challenged, but you will not be defeated. You will be challenged, but you will carry on the call that God has in your life. So my prayer in this season, this is the second week of Advent, I want you to start preparing yourself. You know, sometimes we love Jesus Christ, right? We want to serve him. At the same time, you have to expect God to do something big in your life. You have to position yourself, God, to do something big in your life in this season. Because it's a season God can meet you where you are. That's what we call a time of a preparation. Advent is the moment you prepare yourself to celebrate our Savior. 
Where are you today? Where, what is your conception of Advent in your life? What is the thing that is challenging you so much that uh, you don't even know what to do? Are you trusting Jesus for that? Are you getting closer to him? Do you have a scripture that will challenge you when everything looks wrong and you go to that scripture you say, God, you said this? I know this exactly what you say. I take that in my life and I want to see that to be fulfilled in my life. And then tomorrow you take that same scripture, you quote it to yourself again. The night and in, 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 in the evening and the morning, you quote that scripture again because that scripture speaks to you so louder. That scripture is telling you that uh, no weapon from against you shall prosper. Really? Okay, here I am today. I don't feel like it. But God, you say this. That's where we are as a warrior. A warrior is not anything you're going to do physically all the time. It's in the spiritual realm. Are you prepared to get to that level so you can fight a good fight of faith and take what is rightfully yours? Because sometimes you have to fight to get what is below to you. Amen? Daniel, Daniel, the Bible said, the angel showed up to Daniel. They said, Daniel, since you start praying, the test was being released, the blessing was being released. But there are warfare out there going on. That's not mean that you have to give up. Sometimes the blessing is coming. It's not a rabbi yet. God released it, but they have a warrior, the, the evil one who's, who's fighting so that, that that blessing won't reach you. But you're not going to allow that happen. What is yours is yours. Amen? What is yours is yours because God gave it to you. You're not going to allow anybody, any spirit, any enemy to take that away from you. If you let that happen, then you are willing to cooperate with the outside of God. God's blessing is in our reach if we will faithfully do what he asks us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for 2 Samuel 7, from verse 1 to 17. We thank you for the world. We thank you for the heart. We thank you how you present the whole things, that to open our eyes, to see the way you do things, that sometimes we have to take time to digest what you are saying, to understand it. Holy Father, bring us close to you. We are here the month of the Lord in this community. We are not doing much. Even though we are doing something, we don't feel like we are doing much. Help us, Lord. I pray for this congregation to grow. I pray for this congregation to just sow their life up to you with a whole heart, soul, and mind. And I pray, Holy Father, to bless each one of us. God, we thank you. We give all the praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Can you give a hand to the Lord Jesus Christ?